Welcome to the Level With Me podcast, the podcast where two extremely white dudes compete to see which one of them can become the whitest. Thanks. Thankfully, we both live in the Pacific Northwest. Neither of us have seen the sun in God knows how long. What, six Especially months? Especially recently. Yeah. Especially recently. The amount of rain and wind. Whew. It's night. Nice. Yeah, I know. And you just have that tiny little window in your room that gives you like, mm-hmm. if it's not sunny outside, I mean like, Where's Nothing. the vitamin D? I mean, you're yeah. going to the doctor. There ain't no D. <laughs> <laughs> no vitamin D. Uh, yeah, the podcast where we recommend vitamin D supplements. Ooh, we should get sponsored by vitamin That's D that. supplements. There we go. Yeah, and Metamucil. Metamucil, yeah. <laughs> Sunglasses, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Things to hand out to other people when they see us. You know, just, oh, it's so bright. Do you ever get mistaken for Jesus just because you're like a glowing figure walking down the oh, street? Oh, like, where is that going? I look, don't look anything like Jesus. Uh, so you're, you're my the the shine off of my forehead, the radiant the radiant shine. But no, I I do not. Yeah. No. Well, I've been. What have you been up to, dude? I've been I've been gaming. I can finally talk. There's this cool game that I played. That I can say what I played, but I can't give my opinions until Friday. But I'm actually really okay. excited about this game. Uh, okay, Gray Zone Warfare. I, I knew know, it was that. I don't know why they need the warfare at the end of the name, unless somebody already took Gray Zone sometime. I've never heard of a game called Gray Zone. But anyway, Gray Zone Warfare. You've probably seen the trailers for it because it's made by like people didn't know what to think. It's made by a mobile game company who's only made mobile mm-hmm. games. And then all of a sudden they come out of the blue with a trailer for essentially what looks like Tarkov on Unreal Engine 5 graphics cranked to the max and in a tropical jungle environment. And it looks right. insane. And everybody's like, well, this looks incredible, but also is this, where did this come from? Is this a fake game? We don't know that much about this mobile company. Like what's going on? Uh, Can you I, at least say, is it a fake game? It is not a fake game. I got to play it. I'm very excited about it because it is real. It's a real mm-hmm. thing. Um, and I, I I haven't played enough of it to give detailed like, oh, this is what the meta and this is how it's going to be in the long run. But it is. it does feel like the evolution of the extraction shooter. And I can't say much more than that other than there'll be content coming out on Friday. Nice. And I'm excited for everybody to be able to play this game. But uh, yeah, it feels like kind of it could be a, the next big thing. I'm looking forward to learning more. I What I'm so impressed by is you're right. It did come out of nowhere. And then it's it's got like a surprising amount of like polish already. And they haven't, they're, they're going to be doing like an early access, I think, correct? Where it's, it's not yeah. going to be something that's going to just launch 1.0. It's going to be can, an early access. Like, yeah, you can't quote like Tarkov. me on that, but I believe they have beta plans yeah um, yeah that's what i thought that's what i thought too yeah. but animations like uh, i've i've seen some behind you know exclusive behind the door stuff too um uh, i think we can talk about some of it but the mm-hmm. like animations were really cool like you know they they have like you know like what you would expect from tarkov you know you've got you know eating food i think and like bandaging and all of it looks really well done and it's like you said tarkov but a little bit more emphasis on i think pve where it's going to be more about doing missions and a yeah, dynamic that's something world I can't and... really commentate on yet because that's fair. That's um, fair. I didn't get to interact much on the PVP side of things. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I can't say what the balance is going to be, how much PVP versus PVE, but um, I am excited by just the fidelity of the game. Like I can mm-hmm. talk about that cause it's in the trailer. Um, yeah. And what you see in the trailer is like unreal push to the max with like all the advanced lighting lumen tech. And, uh, they came up with some, some special secret sauce to get a jungle rendering at that fidelity. Cause I, I just don't know how they did it. Cause if you see the trailer, they're like flying in a little bird helicopter over an endless jungle. And you're like, well, that's cool for a pre-rendered thing. It's like, no, no, that's no, 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 no. That's the game somehow. So then it's like, okay, jump down in there and go, go Tarkov your way through that environment. I don't think the devs actually appreciate me comparing the game to Tarkov, which is funny because I, 
I did make they're, uh, they're, they're going to have to get over it because everyone's going to everyone's going to compare it to Katarkov. Yeah, I think they're cons they're concerned about like it being labeled as like an extraction shooter. But I mean, I don't just because they're they are redefining some of the ways that a typical extraction shooter plays mm -hmm. because they're sort of building up new technology. So they're not bound by some of the limitations of prior extraction shooter content. But I do still think it falls into the vein of extraction shooter. It's just a cool evolution to it. It's like it the is. natural, hey, if technology could do anything we wanted, how would we build an extraction shooter? And I think that's kind of what they're doing with it. So, yeah, I can't wait. It looks really neat. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited. Hopefully, we'll get our hands on it soon eventually. Hopefully. Yeah, I would imagine it wouldn't be too much further because they're, they're kind of ramping up exposure for the game, right? So. Mm -hmm. The future. I was has... very impressed with the passion of the lead developer. The mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this guy clearly he's working hard. And yeah. but he, yeah, I, I was just like, okay, these seem they, they seem to have a good head on their shoulder. Uh, I yeah, I'm look, I I can't wait. Yep, unfortunately, can't say much more about it than that. Kind of um, have to prod, you know, beat around the bush a little bit here. Can't really go into the meats, meats yeah. and taters of it. They did <clears> ask me to talk about it uh today so they're like could oh. you like hype up the content coming on friday <laughs> can you hype up the content that you can't talk about and oh, i was like okay, so opinions sure. are nda'd still mostly and they're like yeah but just you know say a couple things and i was like <laughs> okay no. all right all right well mission accomplished yeah i did uh go back and try out a very old mill sim uh mm. called well, now called Squad 44, previously known as Postscriptum, which is, uh, on, let's be honest, it's the worst game name ever. Um, it's, not the, it's not great. <laughs> when you hear it, do you think World War II FPS? No. No, <laughs> I'm like, not. is this like a post Postman type game? Are we delivering? <laughs> I, I, I had to look up the definition Lord of mail, Postscriptum. Sir, here you are, yeah. Goodman. You just go into an office building and you deliver mail to everyone. I'm surprised there isn't a simulator game around that. Actually, no, there probably is. Now that I think about it, I would not be surprised. Yeah. Uh, God, those sim games, man. I got to... I mean, I, gotta... I literally, I literally for two days played Supermarket Simulator where I stock shelves. I'm not even kidding. I was running a business level cap and I was making bank. There is something oddly addicting about them. Like, I swear if... If I could pull in the YouTube dollars, I'd be like a full-time Euro truck simulator <laughs> guy. I'd just be there, like driving along, picking up the picking up the radio, like breaker yeah. breaker, you know, talking to the yeah. guys. I just, I mean, there is something there is something fun about it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's going th going through the motions, especially like the supermarket game. Is you slow like you start off with just like a little a little shop, and then it slowly gets bigger, and you can get better and and more groceries and amenities and things like that. And then you start hiring people that will start doing the checkout, so you don't have to do the checkout. And it eventually kind of just devolves into stocking simulator. But yeah, yeah, it's it was it was fun for what it was. So postscriptum, I didn't mean to derail you. No, it's fine. I mean, I'm all about getting derailed. I was about to get all crazy about talking about cargo hauling games and stuff, but. Postscriptum, uh, it's not really a, or Squad 44, Squad, I should Squad say. Squad 44, yeah. It got bought a couple of months ago by Offworld or a branch of Offworld. Everybody who's in the know seems to know the different branches of Offworld and who actually is running the game and all this other stuff. And I'm not as privy or I'm not as up on that info, but I think the name change to Squad 44 is good. And I'm kind of curious to see, I was playing it and it's a competent World War II game. But when you put it side by side with Hell Let Loose, which is the other... It doesn't really stand out. Indie World War... Yeah, you're sort of like... It's sort of the same thing, but a little bit more squad, which means there's more logistics involved, and the graphics are just not there. Yeah. So... I, um, I played it for yeah. a night too after yeah. it was like it kind of came back and there was people playing. I was like, oh, I'll check it out again because I didn't. I, I played it originally at launch when they had the like early access, you know, like every game does, mm -hmm. or at least I think it was an early access. And yeah. then and then it kind of you know would kind of withered away and died. But then it got bought and I tried it and it was fine. But you're right. Every time I was playing, I was like, this is basically hell at loose but with worse graphics and it's like well why don't i just play hell at loose instead yeah that was kind and of I, how i felt i feel like steam has also made up their minds about it because if you look at hell at loose is actually fairly popular right now which is cool 
got like you know somewhere around six eight thousand concurrent players where uh squad 44 is i think it's like sub a thousand and it's almost impossible to not make that comparison it's kind of unfortunate because you want indie games to do well and you want them to fill a niche that doesn't exist but then postscriptum or squad 44 and hell let loose ended up filling the same niche and players just kind of gravitated towards Hell Let Loose, which I think is a little bit more accessible than Squad. I would say yeah, they're, all, I, I they're fairly it similar, is. but like Hell Let Loose is like, don't worry about some of the extra logistics stuff and just get in there and, and Well, so fun. like on the scale of Arma is over here, Battlefield's over here, you've got Squad closer to Arma, and then Hell Let Loose is a little bit closer to Battlefield. Yeah, but I'd only say they're slightly. still pretty close to each yes. other, which is yes. a little more logistics. But it is a little bit more, it's, it's a little bit more on the, you know, just on the on the Battlefield side of scale. What do you think about it does make me wonder because I can, I respect squad a lot but I also think that some of the best things to come from squad are like the mods and the evolutions to the game but mm -hmm. I think some of that logistics stuff and the long travel times and all that is really off putting to the average gamer so mm -hmm. you've got people who want a World War 2 game that feels really authentic and then you've got a smaller percentage of those people who are like you know what would be re even cooler is like logistics trucks that have to like resupply the front lines and stuff and or having to run really long distances to get back into combat I, yeah that's the thing that's never really appealed to me but it, it there has to be a a player base there because then they wouldn't have added it right um if it doesn't add value to squad then i i, I can't imagine them keeping it long term yeah. so there must there must I, there's obviously a reason right there's because the logistic aspect does make sure that you can't keep pushing an objective if you don't have the resources. But a lot of times it's like, well, why don't just let us play the game? You know, yeah. uh, why do we need to have these resources? Why can't we just every time we spawn on in, we've got enough ammo and but some people like it. So, yeah, um, if you, that, that's why squad is there. But I also understand why more people gravitate towards like a uh, an alternative that's similar. But but does a little a that, little yeah. bit more accessible. Yeah, I always find when I get into Squad or a game like Squad, like Squad 44, for example, there's a portion of the people playing that understand what's happening in the match, and then there's a portion of people that are just like, show me where the enemy is so I can shoot at them. <laughs> yeah, uh, <that's> me. <laughs> yeah, well, me <laughs> that, too, because <laughs> you really do have to commit a significant amount of time to the game before you understand the whole logistic system and all the mechanics mm -hmm. behind it. And then I can only imagine it's frustrating for those people who are like, guys, you can't push that objective yet. We need to secure this point. What are you doing? You know, and the game is sort of this weird hybrid of people who yeah. know what's going on and people who don't know what's going on. Um, but, you know, I wish them all the best if they're going to pump some money into it and see if they can turn it into the World War II version of Squad, which, mm -hmm. you know, by the naming of it. And it is a Squad mod. It started off as a mod two squad oh, so that kind of makes sense yeah so it's kind of coming full circle they're like reabsorbing the mod um that's cool yeah but we'll I, see. I do remember my early days of squad because i think squad has become much more streamlined yeah uh, but i do remember early on there was a match that i had where i was with a, t a squad and they're like all right we're gonna go take this objective and we're gonna hold it and we held it for like 40 minutes and i saw literally no one the entire match and they're like good job boys and i'm like what do you what that is still an element of squad. <laughs> I know you're like, I think it's become more streamlined. Yeah, it's become more streamlined into joining a server. Uh, once you're in the server, you may still be defending an objective for 30 minutes and your squad leader will be like, good job, man. This is an important thing. You're like, we're playing a video game. I'm not like actually saving people's lives. So I'm not feeling particularly rewarded by sitting in the middle of nowhere for 30 minutes. Right. Uh, it feels like a game design flaw to me. But you know, right. there's but some people like it, and yeah. and 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 when you do, because the thing is, is that when you do get those defenses where the the enemy does arrive, and then it's just crazy, you know, hold off. It's really fun because I've had those moments too, where it's just madness, and they're you know cresting yeah. over the hill, and you're you're laying down cover fire, and it's 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 enjoyable. The Squad's sound a good of, game. the sound effects in both Squad Forty Four and Squad are fantastic. They really yeah. make you feel like bullets are like cracking past you, and like. The explosions and the effects of those look really good. They've done a, I think they probably use Ember Gen or something. Now that I'm a div, I, I know all these terms. Uh, <laughs> but they, the explosions look really incredible. So they've spent their time making them look great, which, which adds a lot to it. And 
you gotta wonder is that just a, a constant balance between all video games where it's like the time and effort it takes to get somewhere does that make the combat that much more intense where if you could just spawn and run into every single battle and squad would it be that crazy and cool or would it just no i don't think yeah. so yeah. I do think I do think that added like like Escape from Tarkov or those games where it's like is that a player is that a scav you're not sure and then when you do have those intense moments they're I think they're more intense because there was that big lull yeah in between and Swifty in chat right now uh, is just mentioning that you know he's he's describing a battle he had years ago in Squad where they were being shelled by mortars and they held it for thirty minutes and it's like. I remember those battles too from Squad. I think I remember them a bit better than like a Battlefield game for the most part. Oh yeah, they're probably more memorable. Yeah, yeah like the whole round and the whole experience. We're in Battlefield. You're like, remember that time I sniped that dude from forever no, away? It's like, no, know? I don't. No, it's like I, I kind of remember a few little moments here and there, but they're they're just that specific instance of combat as opposed to like a a combat sequence or something. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I think now's actually a good time to remind people. I've I've been doing a terrible job of this, but uh, we got to promote the podcast, guys. Uh, welcome to the Level With Me podcast. We have a Patreon that you can support us with. It's 10 bucks a month. You get to watch the live streams of the podcast, which go on Mondays. And then after the live stream, we have a little Q&A, a little powwow, a little hangout with the people. Where we share our feelings. Our true feelings that we reserve specifically for that moment. Um, but if you guys want to support the podcast further, check out our Patreon. It's in the video description. And of course, you can watch the podcast on all the main podcast platforms. So we appreciate your support. And now Matt is going to tell us about... Helldivers 2, baby! Woo! The best game of... No, seriously, it's, like, it's probably the best game of... Well, we'll see. Uh, absolutely loving it, but yeah. they came out with the way that they're handling their live service is so refreshing compared to a lot of other live service games out there because it actually feels like they they planned it out and they care about it, um, which is incredible. Breath of fresh air. Um, so I'm sure because you haven't played it, and I don't know why you haven't played it. Why haven't you played it? I don't know, man. I'm just Bro, like come with me into the front lines, and we'll okay. spread democracy together. Let's do it. Just come. Is, to, is come there a, a level gate thing where like if there I'm, is, but I don't care. I'll, I'll I'll play low level missions with you to get you grinded up, and then we'll be right. good. Okay. No, I I've watched quite a few videos. And I'm like, this does look amazing, and then I I just been crazy busy. You'll be blown. I think you legitimately yeah. will be blown away by how much fun it is. So okay. they added in. So there was mechs and there's rumors of mechs happening. And there were moments where people were like able to get into a mech. I've seen on the mech like videos planets. and they look cool. So let me, let me explain the way that they kind of like led into the mechs, right? This is why it's so cool and why this game is so much fun mm -hmm. is that there were rumors that mechs were showing up on the battlefield. So like some players were getting access only mm. a couple, a couple of days before mechs actually arrived. And so there was like rumors, you know, like, that's you know, clever you're hearing, is that's yeah, so clever, dude. I'm yeah, like, bravo exactly. game devs. You guys get it. You know what's going yeah. on. And then we learned that the, then they're like, Hey, mechs are in full production on this planet. You know, mechs are coming soon to the battlefield so we can fight and bring democracy. But then the automatons start to attack that planet and we need to defend it so that the production can get back up, you know, back up and running. And so then once we Are liberated they making it, you narrative content that you're involved yes, in. Yes. Oh my God. So and cool. Then, and then you, once you defend it, uh, everyone now has access to the mechs and they're incredibly fun. You only get two in a mission and they have a 10 minute cooldown. So they're very, very valuable and everything, but they are unbelievably powerful I've, in the I've right situation. I've seen situations. the videos of them just like blasting like some of the, the mini boss type characters oh, yeah. like instantly. I was like, Whoa. Straight up, like you shoot you shoot a charger in the leg, it blows out the leg, you use your mm -hmm. Gatling to like disintegrate it. You know, you've got a horde coming out of the ground and you just mow them down with the Gatling. It is, the power fantasy is 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 awesome. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been it a is, ton of fun. It's like completing the full circle of everything Starship Troopers at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's from the sounds of it, rumors and like leaks and things like that, they're going to be adding in like different kinds of mechs later on. There's going to be different you vehicles. You can't just have be introducing. one mech. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. you got to have the, you got to have the sniper mech, the Gatling mech, the whatever, the tank mech, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah. I've I've been so enthralled with the title. But what I have learned is that if you are enjoying a game, never go to its subreddit because wow. Hmm. The drama and the negativity surrounding that subreddit recently has been insane. I'm not saying that the game is perfect and they're bringing up some good critiques, but man, I went in there and I was like, what the hell happened yeah, to Helldivers? Like, like, is you this assume, not like, the most popular beloved game of all time? That's outright What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, so like I said, they are bringing up some good critiques. Uh, it does feel like the developers kind of ramped up some of the difficulty at the higher level. They nerfed the railgun, which was super popular. And it was one of the one of the few ways of dealing with heavily armored uh, targets, which in this game can be quite numerous. So yeah. uh, their critiques are like valid. And they've they said like, hey, we're listening. And I think they're going to make some necessary improvements later on. But you would have thought like they kicked the like their puppy or something like that. Like it was like, what in the world? <laughs> happens over I, like the night i think this is what happens when you build a community that's crazy in love with your game and then you yeah. tweak it and they're like no my baby like, wait a second i liked it the way that it was true good point good point yeah so i mean i'm sure the devs are probably taking it in stride and they're like well we also have thousands and thousands of concurrent players who are loving it yeah. and <clears throat> yeah i could also see the appeal as a dev to try and wanting to ramp the difficulty because you're like well look at the completion rates on these super high level missions well that's like, the thing is i, I yeah. do think that probably so <laughs> the second second hardest difficulty is called impossible and then the hardest difficulty is helldiver uh -huh. but it like a lot of people were probably it's because I, I i played a couple days ago with the um with a mech and played at nine difficulty hardest difficulty in the game really didn't have any problems uh mm -hmm. when i was going against the terminates which are the bugs the automatons screw them they it's it's madness it's i can't <laughs> they're they're unbelievably difficult but against the the, the bugs it's it's fine yeah. um so i'm assuming they're like hey maybe we need to make it so that the hardest difficulty truly is a challenge and it's not going to be a walk in the park and you you do need to really bring your a game and you're not going to be able to rely on like one weapon to get the job done which is kind of like what the railgun was doing yeah no, that's fair. You got to rebalance the meta and keep it interesting, yeah. you know, otherwise yeah, it just becomes but, the one thing. But the player base was not happy about it. And granted, there was a dev that kind of stirred the pot a bit and his response wasn't probably the best oh, way. Oh, yeah, I things. saw a little bit of that where the yeah. basically the studio had to apologize and they're like, we yeah, are dealing it, I, with the matter internally, you know. But it, yeah, and maybe I didn't see the full response, but it wasn't like the best written response. And I could see why people were maybe a little annoyed with him. But man, once again, you would have thought like he did something horrible. Yeah. Like, yeah, he kind of he he riled you up a bit. You know, he's like basically essentially get good, which is like, OK, that's not the best thing a dev could tell everybody. People are so get so butthurt these days where it's like, can't you just take a little bit of a jab, you know, like relax, guys. You've just spent it's, like hours berating the devs and then the dev says, get good. And they're like, unacceptable. Who would say <laughs> such a thing? And it's like maybe, you know, berating these guys endlessly doesn't put them in the best mood ever. It uh, wasn't the best response by the dev, but yeah. at the same time, I think the community can take things a little bit too far. So all in all, I think there's a lot of positivity coming out of Helldivers. Uh, yes, they're, they're, I do like the, the suggestions that the community is making. Uh, it seems like right now there's like way too many spawns. Like you'll, you'll take out a ship and then immediately another one will come right back in. And you're like, uh, what's the point of taking out the ship if it's going to be instantly, you know, resupplied? Like there should be a little bit of breathing room, right? Like, no, no breathing room. Yeah. So they're going to dial it down a little bit um, in some cases, which I think is actually good. So the community brings up good points, but oh boy. Yeah. I got to say, it's got to be disappointing as like uh, the dev development team to have one dev say a stupid thing and sort of oh, and paint the company down. in a negative mm -hmm. light. It does suck. And I do think from the perspective of the developers is like, yeah, you kind of do have to moderate the people who are out there and speaking for your game. You're like, these 10 people, they can talk about the game because they know how to speak to the public and not insult them. And it's like, uh, Todd, Todd, you're Todd, not, Todd come, come over here, Todd. Get you off of talk. Reddit. Yeah, Todd, <laughs> you're not allowed to. I've had that in Their the past. CEO is legit, yeah. though. He, he, he talks to the community all the time. It's like, cool. He's, yeah, he's he's very involved. He's, he seems like a nice guy. 
And I like the direction he's going with it. And like I said, for the most, except for probably the Reddit um, side of things, I think the community is absolutely still loving the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, it still has over like hundreds of thousands of people playing concurrently still. I think I just checked. It was like 250,000 um which on a you know a monday it's wild nuts. also it's wild yeah 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 for a co-op game this late yeah. after launch like i've never yeah. even heard of anything like that co-op <laughs> this isn't like know. a battle royale what are you nope. guys doing it's insanity but it's cool yep. that they've shown what great co-op can do to a multiplayer game mm -hmm. and just like blow it out of the water in a way that nobody expected before because these are the numbers i mean these are numbers that you would expect to see on like a massive single player launch for like the first week or two. Yeah. Uh, then, or a mega multiplayer hit, right? Like, I don't know. I can't think of any other co-op games that have done this well. It's, it's wild. Not off the top of my head. No. Yeah. Uh, speaking of super cool communities that always uh, treat the developers nicely. Um, have you been following battlefield stuff at all? uh do, do i want to know i well the, the, i've been following a little things. bit there's two okay, things okay, been two going things. on i see you have a note there uh about youtubers and battlefield but uh we can get we can <laughs> transition to that but the first thing was that they, they announced they're adding in all this visual recoil to battlefield I 2042 and people are like what are you guys why, doing? Why are you doing that? We're like two years, over two years past the launch of 2042. And now you're like, we're going to add a bunch of visual recoils to make the weapons feel unique. And you're like, what? Like, first of all, most people don't like visual recoil or the way that it's done has to be done very subtly and very subtly. Generally speaking, it's overdone. It's not good. So they come, they come out of the blue almost as if like, completely unaware that people would not <laughs> respond well to a visual recoil announcement yeah uh, so that's kind of weird and as you can imagine the community was like wtf what a dumb decision 2042 worst game ever type responses you know as they do as they do which i think 2042 to be fair has come a long way and is actually much more enjoyable to play now compared to when it launched um you could yeah, no i think it's i think it's an okay game now yeah, yeah. i wouldn't I, I wouldn't go as far to say it's a great game but i think it's an okay game now so the other update and i actually have to check timelines and stuff but we might actually be hearing about this <laughs> when the podcast launches are right around there but yeah, the i think season... tomorrow i think oh is that it okay well then we'll know is the um season seven teases there's a, a map that looks very <laughs> carcand inspired if you will oh um, it looks cool. I think it looks neat. Um, I think they could learn a lot from those old Battlefield games. So the more of that old school favela, small village type stuff they can throw in there, I think, for the better. So see what they can I, come I up mean, with there. I mean, I'm excited that we're actually getting two maps, which is which is crazy. Woo! Like. Spoil that, me, Dice. Yeah, I know. Spoil me. I know. Oof, what am I? The fact wait, that we're... You, am I going to play one map and then transition to a completely other new map? It's wild, uh, when am I going right? to get time to play all this content? <laughs> it's crazy that the final. I'm assuming this is the final season. Maybe not. Um, but the, I've assumed the last three seasons same. were the final yeah. season. I think probably more than that. I was like. We get whenever they finish their quota right so season yeah. seven yeah would which be i think like, was two seasons ago yeah okay final last two um, seasons but the yeah the fact that season seven is going to be having two new maps when this is the literally the first time this has ever happened because every everyone before that has been reworks yeah and so we get a rework of an old map which is good because those old maps needed it isn't it crazy that literally every single base map needed to get reworked they were so bad like but that's like it's, from just a logistic standpoint isn't it like insane to think about like every single yeah. map needed a, a not a, t a complete top to bottom rework some but of them a significant were massive. rework like yeah, i they mean were. hourglass was yeah they did a lot to it <laughs> they cut out the stadium in hourglass i mean the the some of those maps were so bad they're just like oh, i don't know just make a new map within it because we yeah. can't really use the absolute garbage we delivered in the first place i mean i can i can believe it based on this quality that the maps launched in it's harder for me to still wrap my head around the state that the game launched in because 
that it was just so obviously not tested. Like it just yeah. didn't go through the normal paces that you any game should go through. Like when those rounds launched and you couldn't complete the breakthrough in the game because it was like 128 players in one elevator to get up to a roof. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot do you remember about that? that. And it's like, wait, I do, did anybody yeah. does anyone over there have a calculator? Yeah, you want to like type in 128 like divided like it by it sounded like yeah. a cool idea to have everyone attacking the top of the 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 skyscrapers and everything. Um but then when you actually had to do it, you're like this is the worst. Yeah. It's impossible. Ever. Nobody tested this. Like, and unless, then on top yeah. of that, you could call in vehicles onto the top of the it as well. So you're literally there's just literally an army of yeah. like tanks. Yeah, you like, come out the elevator to 64 players and, and tanks just aiming at the door of the elevator. Yeah, on the way up, and you're like, how is this? this isn't a choke point, dice? This is just impossible. This is insanity. Mm -hmm. People were using the hovercrafts to scale the sides of the skyscrapers to try and get up there and stuff. You yeah. only ever lost if the defending team just got bored and like jumped off and were like, ah, whatever, we don't care anymore. But yeah, and, and it was just a great showcase of literally not testing the game at all to an Unfortunately. extent or testing it and the testers being like this is a disaster we cannot launch this and then the executive it's like being we have like, to do it um, yeah. we're launching you know this is our window holiday season boys let's get it out there but yep. um i'm excited to check out season seven i thought their last season was good they're just very light on the content so they're fun. You hop in, you burn through it real quick. The single maps do hurt them a lot because you're just like, oh, am I going to play the same map again? And then again, and then again, and then again, and again, and again, and again. And you're just like, well, how many times can I do this before I'm sick of playing this map and this content? So right. two maps should make that mm. in theory twice as enjoyable. Um, we I think were so content, spoiled. Yeah. We didn't even know it with like past battlefields. You got like four new maps with an update. Yeah. Four. We were very four. spoiled. I think it's because we we're constantly in the comparison to Call of Duty. You can't even compare Battlefield to Call of Duty anymore in terms of content because it's just like two different, two different worlds of content. You know, COD is like, here's an entire like zombie mode and four maps and a billion guns and new modes for our royale and like all this stuff the and call then, of duty has its own its own issues sure but i hear you i hear sure you. i won't say i won't defend cod but i'll just say comparatively and then battlefield's like mm. here's a new map with some narrative stuff and like and like four new guns or like three new guns it's not even four sometimes sometimes it's three new guns and you're just like all right i mean i'll be entertained for like a good day <laughs> Yeah, so I like I, I'm, I'm right with you. I'm I'm excited for for season seven. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's good. I, I yeah, like, I, I like Battlefield. I just there's something about Battlefield that that resonates with me. I went back and played Battlefield Four last night, and I had a blast. It was a really good time. Oh, you did BF Four. That's yeah. cool. I I, I kind of bounce around between like one five twenty forty two four. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm all over the place. I like Battlefield. It's a great, I mean, it is, it is still kind of the king of accessible sandbox shooters. Yep. It's a hard, hard niche to break into. All the indie devs that are trying to do it have gone more hardcore with it. Nobody's tried to compete in the exact same vein as Battlefield because it's challenging to do, you know, you got to do yeah. vehicles and soldiers and cool unlocks. They've got Very it. Very tough. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it a, qu a bit last podcast, but I do... I'm I'm pulling for them, man, with the next title for sure. Damn, with, I with really this. hope they can make it work. I really, really want them to make it work. Yeah. In the meantime, everybody else is enjoying um, soaking up that old player base and uh, that extra time that Battlefield gamers have on their hands yeah. to play. You know, whatever it is, Hell Divers too. They're probably all playing Hell Divers too at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's playing that though. Even Star Citizen fans, Matt. Oh, wait, what were you going to say about YouTubers in Battlefield? Oh, so, um, yes, the last podcast, we asked the question, what would you like to see in the next Battlefield? And there was a couple of, like, some of, most of it was, you know, really positive and, you know, interesting ideas. And then some people are like, nothing that YouTubers say because they ruin Battlefield games. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I had there was one person I remember a comment a while ago who blamed me for blame me specifically. They named me specifically yeah. for uh 2042. And it was your fault. 
it was it was my fault. And you know what? I'm here. I'm here to announce that uh, I am sorry. Um, and it it really truly was um, a passion project of mine, and I, I I let it slip through my fingers. But <laughs> I had no I had I literally. What were you thinking I, with 128 players, Matt? Why did you do that to us? <laughs> I did not get an early pre- preview of the game. I did not get consulted for Battlefield 2042. I I literally had I, my hands did not touch that game at, I don't at think any they point. Had time for consultation. Yeah, I like, BF1 I literally was, was so far to ahead. Do, yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to get a preview for like, you know, a review, a review session. And because I was only going to do a stream for it, they literally didn't even let me do that. So like launch day was the first time that I even had a chance to play. Well, a lot of people got into the alpha. Like it wasn't just YouTubers. I think it was like a mm-hmm. closed or open alpha or something, but a, a whole bunch of people got into it. You just didn't partake in that one. Yeah. Uh, well, I may, no, I don't think I did. I don't think, okay. I, I don't think I had, um, no. <clears throat> yeah but so, either way yeah i mean like i got hammered for giving 2042 a fair shake where i didn't say hey uh it's a great game i also like i gave the devs credit for what was good and not bad but basically people were so upset with the game that it's like unless your review is just an endless rant slamming it about yeah. how awful every element in the game is then like you're clearly propping up the battlefield tents and i just yeah. like i understand where people's frustration comes from because they want they want someone to blame right and yeah. if you want to blame me for 2042 you can do that i, I do. mean there's that's fair no uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what i did i don't i didn't even really make any videos about it other than one where i said you know 2042 was a disappointment um if Dude, you want to blame me that's fine <laughs> um but i think they i think I don't, I don't think YouTubers and streamers have as much influence on game development as people really think. Yeah. Uh, Cause like it gets tossed around a lot. It's like, I don't know how much this is actually impacting devs. Yeah. I would say the, the thing that people should be most worried about is that truly the, and I see this all the time is the vocal minority seems to have a big impact on game development because if there's a Reddit or something like that, those are the biggest Making a those lot are of the, news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the people who are happy with the way the game plays usually don't pipe in because they're like, I'm enjoying this. And all of a sudden there's a huge crowd complaining about this element of the game that the majority player base has no issue with. But because there's sort of a group of people that got together and complain about one element, and all of a sudden the devs are like, Oh man, there's like a, a bunch of people chime in and they yeah, don't like may- this. Maybe it maybe it is a problem. Right. Yeah, so it, I think that's tough... something that devs it's it's hard for devs to dance around that, but I've never in my experience of knowing developers, working with developers, seen them take feedback from YouTubers uh any more seriously than their larger player base because ultimately they want to cater if they to know their, what they're doing. Crowd. Yeah, they want to cater to the crowd. Yeah, if, if they know what the they're crowd. doing, yeah. Yeah. And also I've been to plenty of feedback events with like a room full of YouTubers or or content creators and like it's very obvious just how bad some of the feedback is. You're, people are trying not to laugh at how bad the feedback <laughs> is sometimes. <laughs> You've been to some of those with me, Matt. You know what I'm talking about. Just really yes. awful. Yeah. Like, you know, so, I mean, it just is what it is. Good feedback is good feedback. Bad feedback is bad feedback. It's usually not too hard to separate the tail from anybody's perspective, in my opinion. Right. I'd like to think that developers are good enough at their job where they can recognize a, you know, a good suggestion from a bad suggestion and be like, oh, I never thought of it that way. And then, you know, from their lens of game development, think if that's a good way or a bad way to, you know, pursue whatever it was. Yeah. Um, There are, there are instances where I think that devs take it a little bit too far. Like Escape from Tarkov, like is such a grindy game. And a lot of people have the theory it's so grindy because you have streamers who know life it. And they're yeah. like, well, we have to have this much content and like this, these, these horrible quests that take forever because they get through it too fast. Well, it's like, no, your average player or even your above average player is going to take forever to get through it. Yeah. Why are you accommodating these streamers? So I, I get where they're, you know, where some of this criticism is coming from. But um, I mean, probably the best example of this is uh, Rainbow Six Siege. The, the pro players were asked, do you think that you really messed that dev- game up too, Matt? Yeah, I, I totally ruined. Yeah, that was I, I ruined every game apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, do you? So they were asked, "Do you think the uh, devs listen to the pros?" And the pros were like, "No, they listen to the casual player base." And then the casual player base is like, 
you know, you know they listen to the pro the pro scene too much, right? It's like, oh, well, so it's somewhere in the middle because yeah, that's yeah. The, what the devs are trying to achieve. They're trying to accommodate their entire player base. Yeah, and I think it I think people get confused because there clearly is a value in giving opportunities to streamers and content creators yes, to let yeah. them see stuff first and let them promote it because it's free promotion. Paying for that kind of promotion is a lot of money usually. Yeah. So they're like, well, if we can get it for free by offering the content early to content creators and streamers, then we save a ton of money. So it looks like they're just in bed with all the content creators and in, in every aspect of the game. When in fact, they're just like, no, we just, we like getting free promotion. So of course we're going to, let them see the content first and then devs can't help but ask they're like well what'd you think of it you know everybody wants right. to know what the player base thinks of their game so yeah sometimes the content creators will give the first feedback but usually especially in a game like say battlefield or something which doesn't have a pro scene then usually no. the content well, is kind of but not eh, anymore i mean yeah it used to kind of try to um but the the feedback from the content creators is usually identical to the player base most of the time. You know, everybody's Listen, just because at the end of the day, they're just players. The way I yeah. see it is that streamers and YouTubers, their voice matters, but no more than anyone else's voice. It just it just should be, it should just be one of many. And if that one of many is kind of the feedback is one direction, then it probably should be taken into consideration. Just because a streamer is mentioning it, doesn't mean it's inherently wrong. Uh, yeah. If, if everyone else is like, yeah, no, I can see where it's coming from. I do see that like streamers can or in, or YouTubers, whatever, uh, can influence. Uh, I hate that word so much, but they can they can rile up their their base. You know, yeah. be like this is bad, and it's like I that that I can see as being a criticism. I I do see that Perhaps, happen every once but in a while. I mean, like I've certainly I've I've definitely put my opinion out there when it's not the popular opinion, and you just get backlash. Mm. You know, so I mean, it's like. There's, there's oh, do you so remember? Do you, you remember the 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 smoke um, debacle mm. in do I? Battlefield I still 4. get people. <laughs> still, I still if if somebody starts like an anti level cap Reddit thread on like uh -huh. one of the battlefield forums, there's always somebody in there that's like, I remember when he said people who like the smoke, smoke, uh, and fleer optic meta were dumb or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so for those that are, such aren't aware, offense, such offense. In Battlefield Four, there was a time where they buffed smokes because smokes got when when the game came out, smokes were kind of pathetic, and yeah. then they they made them more dense, and so that they actually could cover you. And then uh, everyone started to realize that if you just threw down smokes and then use the flare optic to peer through the smoke, you could literally just take out anyone on the other side who wasn't using that same combo. Yeah. And it devolved into everyone throwing smokes down and then people would counter it with flares. And so it just became like a disco disco party night on Operation Metro and Locker because that yeah. was the counter and that was the meta and it was awful. It was and so terrible. you made the suggestion. You made the suggestion like maybe this isn't the well, best gameplay experience. No, I did. I I sort of jokingly, but I, I it doesn't always come across that way. I was like, people who like this are dumb or something like that. I kind of said it flippantly. You probably you probably did. <laughs> well, I did say that, and people okay. lost their minds. <laughs> it's like if you like this meta, you're dumb or something like that. Or I said stupid people <sighs> like this kind of meta. Uh, uh huh. You didn't you really know, help your case, but I didn't. Yeah. But also, it's like honestly, it's the worst goddamn meta ever. And if you like it, it wasn't enjoyable. I'm doubling and down. I, you know what, Matt? If you like that meta, you are. You are dumb, stupid. So, yeah. um, but that, but like you were, you were. I, I think you were right because it was, it was getting to become a problem. It was. Uh, yes, it's not realistic. The whole point of using a flare is so you can be peer through smoke and stuff like that. Like I get it. It's, it's not. It's not realistic, and I know a lot of people like authenticity for their battlefield titles, but who from a wants, gameplay standpoint, who wants to play a black and white game? <laughs> right, I know. I know. The, I'm, I'm you know, right there with you, dude. You know what's funny is like I think around the same time, Planet Side Two was going through the exact same meta, where mm. you could throw smokes everywhere, and then you just use their heat optics, and then you would just go into the smoke as like a light class with the heat optic and you would just waste everybody. And you would see these little control towers that were just giant clouds of smoke. Cause there's like 50 dudes throwing smoke everywhere. And then the tank right. drivers would all have infrared optics too. And they'd just be laser beaming people through clouds of smoke. And 
it was an absolute nightmare. Like it was horrible gameplay. Unless you were using the exact meta, you just couldn't play. You would spawn into a cloud of smoke. You'd be like, what's going on? And then some tank would shoot you from a hundred meters away. And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> yep. It wasn't, it's not and there's good. People it, that just, defend it just that. doesn't work. They just like it, having it, this <laughs> dumb, like really simplistic knowledge curve over some other people, you know, and they're like, aha, I got that player who doesn't understand what's happening. It's like, is that really that rewarding? I mean, well, I don't know if it's, I, I, th I think there's people that do like the authenticity and I don't, I'm not trying to diminish that yeah. fact. I think people really do like feeling immersed and having gadgets work well, there the was way a that good they work point in real life. Brought up too, is that, um, a lot of smoke, uh, emitters uh do account for infrared optics in real life so oh. they'll they'll block it you can have infrared proof blocking smoke smoke stuff. yeah so it's like hey um so it even so it even is realistic and authentic in that case too then yeah it would be to to not let them see so, right through right the smoke so you're, you're, the yeah. What, yeah what eventually became the the new play style right or the normal play style where you can't just do that yeah but anyway it's just so what i'm trying to say there. is you you ruined battlefield 4 so thanks <laughs> thanks for that yeah, everybody. The game that everybody now praises as the best Battlefield game of all time. But I remember when we were playing it, people were it was just nonstop complaining about various things. It's and, so much fun. I like I said, I played it yesterday, and yeah, it's getting a little outdated, but graphically, it still holds up. Its gameplay still holds up. It's it's a blast. Yeah, I know. It's like. You know they're gonna do some remaster. I don't want them to do a remaster. I don't want a remaster. I want them to don't just say, it. "Hey, what if we just made another game like it?" <laughs> but yes. we don't. We don't. Uh, we don't. I don't have to the, remaster like, it because, like, let's be honest, a lot of the maps on it weren't fantastic. Like a huge percentage of the Battlefield Four maps could just be tossed away. Like they weren't great. If you actually think about all the DLC maps and everything they added to the game, the like, DLC was were good, but the base game was a little rough for maps. Yeah, yeah, Lang Kang Dam or whatever. Like I could, I could easily oh. never play that map again. But if they did a remaster, people would be and upset. It was like Z Zavod, if, Zavod's fantastic. Zavod, yeah, Zavod's great. Yeah, for sure. But like even some of the like, I'll get in trouble for bashing on some of the the skyscraper you better, maps you better that watch people yourself, loved boy. so much but you would cross this giant open oh dawn street. breaker in particular yeah, dawn breaker like come on people like that yeah. map, and it was just like you don't you like not having cover <laughs> i guess and crossing they, the street and that was uh was yeah. a flip of the coin sometimes and then everything would come down to these weird little choke points so you'd, you'd be getting laser beamed crossing open territory and then it's like all right everybody pile into this one room with an mcom you're like this is insane this nonsense guys come on but god i love it though uh, god, I, know. I love it i know i i hope the next battlefield really is innovative like true to form but also innovative same time you know I, well, getting to your getting your remaster point, I thought that's what we were going to be getting with Portal. I I really thought that if if Battlefield 2042 was successful at launch and it was like actually mm -hmm. fantastic, I do think that we would have gotten like well, they did remaster you know, or, some of the maps. Right? No, I know, I know. So we would have gotten like you know one or two new maps, and then they would have given us like one or two new or old maps remastered into Portal, right? So it would have been kind of like a continuous like, hey, this is like now our playing ground for old battlefield titles because we got all the old maps now in yeah but in they screwed up all the all the and weapon then just, stuff and, yeah and then just yeah. it just didn't play out you know yeah it's just weird and there was no progression or fun stuff to do with it really so you're just like okay i guess we can hop in here and kind of like do a weird yeah. clunky 1942 remaster <laughs> yeah like oh it's kind of it was neat. It, it's fun yeah but sort of it, neat, it loses its luster pretty fast it kind of feels like a community mod to a certain degree you know where you're like oh that mm -hmm. would be cool if like a community mod did it but then you're just sort of like okay well yeah this is a, feels like an old game because it is an old game to a yeah. degree yeah well there's some uh exciting stuff let's get off of battlefield yeah we could harp on this forever man um i mean we we you know battlefield veterans over here we'll be talking more next podcast about the next dlc i'm sure you know yeah. uh or sure we will season, be. whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, you've been waiting for it, Matt. Star Citizen. Star Citizen. Hit me with a level cap. Okay. They did testing starting on Friday and over the weekend with a jump gate. You can now jump through a jump gate from Stanton into Pyro on a completely different just, server. Isn't that, oh, isn't that just the load screen essentially, though? 
I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they so, will instead argue, of, so instead uh, of just clicking on the menu, like, I'd like to go to here, you go to a certain area, and then you yeah. go, I would like to go through no, here. No, 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 no. You go <clears throat> to a certain area, try okay. to align your ship properly to the jump gate, fail about 10 times, oh. finally figure it out, then make it through, and then you're in pyro. Uh, gotcha. Which, yes, it could easily be argued is a load screen. I do believe their technology is more advanced than that, where they could just, they could probably set it up where it had some clever transition, where it was like portal, where you just see mm -hmm. the other system and like go through. They could probably do that, but their image for what a wormhole looks like is essentially what would be a load screen then anyway. Yep. But uh, they tested it. It's the first time players have transitioned from one server to another in that way. So it's a big deal for the community. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it I, seems I didn't mean like to rain they, on the parade, but that was no, my first impression. Star Citizen absolutely deserves all the skepticism uh, and sort of downplaying some of its stuff because they've they've been promising this for three, four years now, essentially. Um, uh -huh. And each year it gets delayed by another year and then by another year. But they might actually hit their benchmark this time because they're testing it in March and the goal is to get it out by the end of the year. So it's like, okay, well they're testing it now. That gives them time to work out the kinks, hopefully by the end of the year. Cause prior to this, there was like no testing. It was just like, yeah, we're not even close. So they're close. They're getting there. They're getting there. And, um, Ooh, DLSS in the next patch, man. Ooh, Those frame frames. rate higher than, yeah. I mean, I don't know. The frame rate was pretty bad last time I played. Yeah. No, pretty terrible. Great. Yeah. I mean, it, it's CPU locked, unfortunately. Ah, so do it. I got a 4090 and some places I'll be getting a hundred plus FPS and other places I'll be getting like 30. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's super unoptimized, right? Like they haven't gone through and been like, oh, why is this area 30 FPS? And that's a hundred. They're just not there yet. They're not interested in that aspect <laughs> of optimization yet. Yeah. But man, I think you're going to be on the next patch. You're going to be like, holy crap, look at all this okay. cool stuff. I think all it's right. cool. All right. I'm, in, I'm ready. You signed me up. It's been, yeah. it's been over a year, I think, since I last played. I haven't played in a while either because their patches haven't been super interesting. But this next patch is like, it feels like a second game's worth of content. Like They're the, building up to it. The list of content is insane. It's just truly insane where you're like, this nice. is like missions upon missions upon missions and all kinds of new pvp and all kinds of new locations and yeah it looks dope and that's pre-pyro like it, it looks pretty dope cool yeah have you caught the weird overwatch promotions happening right lately? before right before the stream yeah yeah did you see the well, i'd say the promotions were cool yeah they are they were really cool the cowboy bebop stuff yeah and there was another one too i forgot what other a collaboration they're going all fortnite with their collaborations all of a sudden you know with fortnite's getting all the marvel stuff and whatever yeah. mm -hmm. let me see if i can find what the latest collabra was overwatch oh uh, porsche <laughs> porsche <laughs> yeah overwatch 2 porsche like what is this i don't know i I think Blizzard's trying to make some money right now because maybe we we don't have any player numbers for Blizzard games because Blizzard's like, why would we let you see our numbers? You don't need to know this. The arcane knowledge is not for you, yeah. boy. We will not even let you track how many hours you have played of a game <laughs> because we don't want you to feel depressed knowing that you have spent <laughs> World of Warcraft fans. <laughs> five thousand hours in World of Warcraft. <laughs> so they yeah. So there's been these. Uh, like, I mean, Cowboy Bebop is old AF. I mean, granted, Netflix it's... sort of brought it back into the limelight briefly. Uh, I know. Ugh, yeah. I, ugh, makes me feel sick just thinking about what they did to my baby. But uh, <laughs> over, I got to say the Overwatch Cowboy Bebop hybrid of characters kind of makes sense. It, uh, I could see like a McCree, Spike. I could see some of the other characters. Cassidy. His name is Cassidy now. Cassidy. Oh. oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Shows you. I don't, I, I don't, I don't blame you. I don't blame yeah, you. Yeah. But uh, it's kind of cool. The only problem is that I don't care about Overwatch too. Um, Have you? Did you actually see what he Cassie his new skin looks like? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I can see the similarities. I can see the similarities, but it's it's 
Is it a stretch? It's like they tried to blend the two, uh, mm. like the, like you know the anime character and and the the Overwatch character into one, and you're like it's uh, well because I think it looks it's like the, cos- it looks like a cosplay, yeah. which is fine, but. It you didn't, just kinda, they didn't I don't have know. to do that because I didn't think the very to. first episode of Cowboy Bebop, Spike is literally wearing like a sombrero and has like the the poncho or whatever on his back. Yeah. So he and that's he, what he's wearing. He, that's 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 what he's wearing for the Overwatch too. Okay, I assume so. But you're saying it still looks like Cassidy, but not white yeah. Cassidy. Okay. Yeah. That's a little weird. It's a little strange. Who is like I said? It looks, it looks more like a cosplay. What's up? What character is Faye? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. And what about, uh, do you know any of the other characters? I don't. That was the main one that I saw. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's what I saw too. And I was trying to figure out who the other characters were from the mm-hmm. trailer. Kind it of a neat, neat thing. I, I think yeah. it's cool. I'm just and, such and a the, cowboy the animation fan trailer. of the original that I'm like, oh, I'm excited. Even though this is Overwatch 2 in a game that I'm probably not going to play, but right. I'm excited about seeing Cowboy Bebop somewhere, you know? Yeah. And the trailer that they showed off was really cool. Okay. Ash... Is Faye? Um, okay, I can Sombra see that. Sombra is Ed, which I get. Um, and then uh, Mauga is Jet. Which one's Mauga? Maga? Oh, he must be that new character. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of neat. A new, but... a new tank, I, I think. I haven't played in a hot minute, so. Yeah. I, is Overwatch too popular? Like, all I've seen was just the amount of hate that overwatch 2 got i think it's still a popular t- title because back a couple seasons ago I, I actually completed the battle pass if you can believe it i was playing off stream i was enjoying myself yeah and i, I completed the battle pass uh but and, and cues were pretty fast but if you looked at the community and what they were saying like oh the game sucks it's you know why bother playing so i think there's just people that just like the game and they play it right and they don't talk about it yeah it's that they vocal just, they just minority play. right it's like if right. you go to reddit you might have no idea how good a game is based on what people are saying. They're like, worst game ever. They're like, well, but, but I have heard that queue times have gotten a little bit longer since mm. I played. It might be, it might be struggling. It's really impossible to know. Cause like you said, we don't yeah. know the numbers. I'd be curious to see if, um, the finals is cutting into their player base. Cause there are some similarities. I would say in if overwatch is kind of like a, a light movement shooter. You know, it's mm-hmm. got some movement stuff in there for sure, depending I mean, on they're the arena, they're, arena, they're basically an arena FPS. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the finals is kind of taps into a lot of the similar skill sets. So I could see a lot of Overwatch players coming to the finals and being like, hey, this is my game now, you know. You see the new season trailer for it? Yeah. Um, I think it looks cool. Yeah. No, I think it looks cool as well. Season two of the finals is uh, very flashy. Yes, uh, you might want to wear some sunglasses. There's a lot of pink and purple and 80s nostalgia in there. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's sort of like hackers have um, hacked the tournament or something like yep. that. And then, that's, that's the lore behind it, at least. Yeah, I like it. I like the world that they've created so much because it kind of gives them this freedom to do almost anything they want mm-hmm. with. It's a game season. within a game. Yeah, it's a game within a game, and so if the next season is dinosaurs, it fits, right? You, you can, can do, do it, right. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah. uh, the in-round events will be, like, Velociraptor attack, and people will be like, oh, that's cool, you know? Like, they can do whatever they want. Um, I think the game was, even though the player base has dropped off significantly since launch, it's still at a very high level for any sort of multiplayer game. And I think the devs are still pretty happy with what they've done and they're sort of ramping up I think people will their... come back for season two. Yeah, I, I hope they make the grind out. less severe because... That was obnoxious. I was not happy about paying for that. I wanted to support the game because it's a free-to-play game. So I yep. bought the season one pass because I'm like, I will support it. And then I was playing it and I was like, how many hours do I need to play to get some of these cool cosmetics? Like a hundred to get yeah. all of it. A hundred hours your insanity it's a lot so i got i felt pretty gypped i was pretty i'm actually quite upset with how they've done their battle pass because yeah make us work for some stuff but don't kill me to get my 20 dollars worth right right like make it fun for me don't make it up don't make yep. it a true grind because to make it a, into a job and all these companies are making it into a job yeah, especially annoying. with the devs and i know this was their plan from the start they weren't trying to market the game as an esports title they're like no we just want this to be a fun 
game that anybody can hop into and play. If mm-hmm. esports happens, then it happens, but it wasn't like the main focus. So it's like, okay, if that's how you want people to play, then don't make them work a hundred hours to get <laughs> right. a battle pass. Cause a hundred <laughs> right. hours is not necessarily a casual experience anymore. You know, mm-hmm. it's now become your main game. The only if you thing played you play. it casually over four months, which I think is what the the first season was. Like you'd probably get it to a hundred, but that means you're playing it still for an entire four months, and, that, and that's what yeah. they want. They want that the battle passes are really incentivized, and I still hold this this opinion to this day is that they're not really there to give you stuff. It's it's there to give you something to strive after and to grind. Yeah. Because they want you only playing their game. And they want you playing your, their game regularly because then you're more likely to spend money. And I but but when it breaks that kind of wall where it's like it's too much grind, it has the opposite effect where it's like I don't even want to touch it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't finish season 1 Battle Pass and I'm not going to. I think a lot of know? people didn't. <clears throat> yeah, I I really hope they're taking that into account with the next season and sort of fixing a lot mm-hmm. of things. And I know a lot of people were upset about the the matchmaking um, or the the ranking system and stuff like that too had a lot yeah. of problems. So I do think they're fixing a lot of that stuff for season two. So I'm excited. But it's coming with some cool stuff. Like there's going to be a five v five mode, and I can only imagine how insane that's going to be. Yeah. Um, I can talk about that soon, but I'm under NDA. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh yes. I will say I'm uh, excited. So there's a 5v5 though. mode. There's a new gadget that allows you to like change things around the map where you like click a button and like a little hole will appear in the wall. Mm-hmm. And then, or you can change a, a canister and make it into like a different kind of canister or, or it turns your, into like a or chair. Or your opponent's like um, mine on the ground. You can turn it into like something else maybe your mine or, or right. something yeah it's kind of which neat. is really cool yeah yeah it's such a clever such a clever gadget which i've literally never seen in a video game before like it's yeah. really interesting that's what's then, so exciting about this is like like okay game mode wise you could do dinosaurs but gadget wise you can do anything you want you can yeah whatever play with physics play with the reality of what the game mode is you know you're just like mm-hmm. here's my gadget that changes what your gadget is you're like what that's a wild concept <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it needs to be something that you have to use relatively up close. I mean, you can't, you know, don't go into it if you can't. Mm. Um, at least from the trailer, it looked like you had to be up close to use it properly. So it's not like you're going to be like uh, your gadget, you know, your wall or your thing you're hiding behind is now uh, a toothpick, right? Like you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's super, super intriguing. And then they're adding in some sort of portal as well. We're going to be able to put down like portals and and transfer from yeah, one you can, thing like, to the tracer other yourself around the map yeah, or something. yeah it's it's the new season looks interesting i'm yeah. excited yeah i'm still i'm still gonna be heavy main man i can't i do heavy just too heavies. good dude it's so good they're fun uh, but oh yeah and then they've i think they've got a bunch of new weapons coming in too which look like oh good what's nice, nice is like there's not that many guns in the game right now so anything they add to it they can actually significantly change up the way you can play a class yeah so I'm kind of excited sure. to see how that plays out. But yeah, um, the finals is great. I think it's a fantastic game, and I hope uh, I hope season two knocks it out of the park, and that the devs can kind of um, I don't want to say correct their mistakes, but improve upon the game with season two in the way that season one may have missed. Because yeah, they are making a brand new type of game, so they don't exactly know how to <laughs> make it's, content. It really for, is a breath of fresh air. Yeah cool stuff man you uh you watch any good movies lately not really i've just been like playing a lot of games and uh reading i am really enjoying uh the book that i'm reading right now so which is uh dark age for the red rising series okay dark age of camelot i wish i will do red rising it'll be like two years from now i'll be like what was that book ah red rising and then i'll read it and i'll be like (laughs) man have you heard of this this is great (laughs) it's incredible yeah yeah it's Um, one of those books where you know when you're reading a book and you're like how did the author do this like how are they there's so many different pieces on the board and and he's mm -hmm. shuffling them around and somehow they keep locking into place and you're like damn okay i didn't see that coming but it also makes sense based off the character's yeah. motivations like they're making the right decision based off of the information that they have it's not the right decision but it's the information that they have which makes it so much more believable and yeah there's oh it's i pfft, i I'm know it. i love that kind of stuff too it's like the game of thrones stuff where 
it all I didn't comes wanna, together. I didn't want to compare it to Game of Thrones, but yes, that is a good. That's, that is that's a descri- the pop description. culture thing that yeah. you can relate it to. I I know it's it's not like uh, George R. R. Martin came up with that or something, right? But he just um, did an incredible job with it. it. Yeah, yeah. I almost feel like they paint the final picture and then they take that and they break it all up and they go, okay. What are the events that we can make that lead up to this, and how does that? Because yeah. otherwise, it'd be too hard to start at the start and figure it out along the way. Like, Which I think is what yeah. George R. R. Martin is struggling with right now is that he he he, he kind of knows where he wants to go, but he's he's started he's just starts branching out with characters that are doing organic things, but yeah. now he's got to try to condense yeah, it into it. Probably like gets end. too much fun writing all these little side stories and stuff. Yeah, he's like oh, this is fun. I don't want to kill this person yet. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I so, watched yeah, I've been um, really enjoying that. I watched The Creator finally. Uh they oh, came out yeah. I, I heard decent things. Yeah, a while ago. I it's I'm I, I love so many things about it and I was so underwhelmed in so many other ways. Oh no. It's what's really cool about the creator is um from a visual effects standpoint, it's incredible. Like it's the closest I've ever seen somebody get to like a live action imagine uh, realization of say Akira, where oh. you've got like kind of robot characters integrating with society, but it's sort of dilapidated or it looks natural. There'll be like a robot riding a bicycle, and it doesn't look out of place. It kind of fits. I heard that they went to like locations, film people, and then CGI'd over them. Yeah. Yeah, which this, is insane to think about. They didn't put like dots on their face, but they like, you know, would film like a grandmother giving tea to their child and then or like their, you know, or like their grandchild. And they just were like, OK, now we're going to CGI that person yeah. into a robot, which is insane. The director, um, I'm blanking on his name, but he he did um, Rogue One and a couple and one of the Godzilla movies. He he himself is like a visual effects master. So he knows mm-hmm. What's how possible. to set up all these shots he was on an ep- he was on an episode of the corridor digital guys um because they critique visual effects on other movies and yeah. he sat down yeah. with them to do it and it was kind of cool because he's like he sort of showed that he's not just some director that's like now make a monster thing do a cool th-. he like <laughs> understands how to set up every visual effect shot to get the the stuff so from a visual standpoint it really was incredible they have these tanks in the movie that are like four stories tall it's like a moving city block holy and they just look so cool and you're like that's awesome my god that's sick you know it's like it's just this crazy future of like weird technology and it's visually represented so well narratively it's very basic i was gonna say what was the thing we were disappointed by because it sounds like the world building kicks ass yeah, visually the world building is so cool. It's got elements of Blade Runner and Akira thrown together and like there's nukes all over the place. They're just dropping nukes left and right. You know, it's just a tactical nuke. Don't worry about it. Uh they blow the shit uh, okay. out of stuff in the movie. And it looks incredible. And you're just and the sound that goes with it, you're just like, whoa, like they're just nuking shit right now. Uh it was just really simplistic from um an ai story story okay telling because if you've been watching anime for any period of time with starting with like ghosts in the shell or something that's kind of dealing with some of these deeper concepts of what What makes us human yeah what makes us human what counts as being alive all that stuff it's sort of retracing some of that but not as well as most other even animes, I would I'm a say, have done it. For that, though, I am a sucker for machines becoming, you know, human-like, yeah. and then showing like humanity. I, I don't know why it resonates with me, but it does. Yeah, it did have a fun kind of idea of where, um, rather than the development of AI and and androids that look like people and behave like people, rather than them trying to eradicate people, they're the ones that are trying to live and cohabitate and humans are the ones that are freaked out by them and trying to eradicate them instead, which yeah. was an interesting narrative Little twist on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a good thing. It just sucked that all the rest of the writing around it was silly. And, um, it was, it's like a movie where the director doesn't really understand the capabilities of modern military stuff. 
So all the sci-fi okay. stuff in this was supposed to be advanced, and you're like, we can do that now, <laughs> you know? Oh. You're just like, uh, that wouldn't have, like, modern nukes don't do that. They're more advanced than that. Like, uh, modern weapons, you would never do, like, why are you sending in, like, these guys with these kind of, it's supposed to look high-tech, but they're really operating like a World War I soldiers would. Like, it's, it killed a it lot of the sci-fi futurism of it, because they're, like, trying to add in all the futuristic stuff, but then none of the tactics make sense at all within the tech that they're presenting even though you just gotta, it looks sh you just gotta shut your cool. brain off for that stuff i'm sick of having to shut my brain off to enjoy a movie you know like star wars has really just washed me up on that front where i'm just like i'm not i can't turn my brain off and enjoy the explosions anymore you know i yeah i need something to make some sort of sense and which movie, is why when yeah. which is why when you have a movie that really does nail it and think it through and you're like, oh, yeah, no, that that's a cool way of approaching it. Mm -hmm. And these tactics make sense in this context, in this world that they've built. It really draws you in more, I think. Yeah. So, I, I get your criticism. Yeah. I do still recommend watching it if you think you would enjoy just a visual feast. Like, yeah, it, and I it love sci-fi. Yeah. And it's it, it really is Akira as a live action film. Like... At least from a visual standpoint, in many ways, it's. A, did it's you a, go and see? Speaking of, did you go and see Dune? No. Uh, have you I, seen? I it? haven't either. But but everyone's claiming it's like the next this this trilogy that they're they're creating that he's creating is yeah on the on the scale at least and like influence of what could be Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is high praise, and. Uh, I can't wait to watch it. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to get to the theaters to, to see it, but yeah. Matt, we can meet up, see it in the theaters. Okay, there we go. We we're can have like a hot an, date. I think we're like an hour away or something like that. Like a little little hot date action. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I'll meet you up. I won't tell my wife where I'm going. Like, uh, <laughs> where are you going, honey? Oh no, nowhere, nowhere. Going to a meeting. Don't check through my phone messages. Can't wait and, to see uh, you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> we could meet up. Go see the go see Dune. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited for it. I, I'm a huge fan of the book and I need to read the other books because people are like, you think dude's good, read like Messiah or whatever. So um, it's, I, I hear mixed opinions on the books because I know that the like Dune and Dune Messiah are pretty well regarded. And then, then after that, I hear things get a little bit more muddied. Um, so I believe the author died and then his son started to write at least mm. one of the books, I think, or he wrote one of them. And um I think that one people are sort of like, yeah, it's really sort of losing. I heard it was even before then too, but I yeah. could be wrong. My timeline might be messed up. I think it changes a lot in terms of like the first book is sort of this, you're following Paul's story and it's sort of an adventure along with him. And then after that, it's just, it's sort of like Ender's game, right? Where like, oh, the yes. first book is Ender's adventure to a degree. Yeah, And then the second book is like a deep philosophical journey. So they're completely different experiences within the same universe. And I think Doom, Dune falls into a similar thing where it might be. By the be, way, I yeah. love how alien the Dune franchise is, you know, like yeah. different worlds and everything. And then the main character's name is Paul. Yeah. Just Paul. Well, I mean. Paul, really? Paul. Yep. Just Paul. <laughs> Bob, hey, hey, what's up, John? <laughs> like, well, it's, uh, welcome it's to the such rules of unique... like of basically writing for a mod an audience. Essentially, look how many movies have like the character named Jack as the protagonist. You know, it's oh, I know, I know. I I, I need like I, a single to, like, syllable guy's name to to catch your attention. It's it's not a criticism. I just I just think it's funny because yeah. it is everything is just so alien and different. And then you have a character. Well, just, his, his name the, is Paul. The main faction that he comes from, I'm trying to remember what their house is. The house of some Atreides. Kind of Atreides. They're kind of like British in a way. Like a lot of their mannerisms and the way they... They got their bagpipes. They handle their stuff. Yeah, they, they kind of have these sort of British nobility characteristics about them. So I think maybe that's a bit more in line. The influence for yeah. it. Yeah, and then you have other... And then like Arrakis is much more... Much I mean, more alien. Yeah, or at least kind of drawing from more Middle Eastern cultures and stuff like that and blending <clears throat> things together. So Yeah. Yeah. Um 
You see where I'm coming from, though. I see what you're saying. Yeah, his name's not like, you know, some... (laughs) (laughs) Well, I didn't expect... (laughs) It's Klingon or something? I think there's a difference between Paul and whatever the hell that was. (laughs) Well, they could speak uh, clicky, you know, where they're like... Like yeah, imagine trying yeah. to write I mean, a book yeah, like no, that. Why? Why? Why what would it be, Why would their language sound like ours? Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Yeah. I got well, you. it's like we were talking last time. I was all annoyed that Napoleon sounded like Joaquin Phoenix the whole time. <laughs> the entire time. Like, yeah. I was even like, ah, yeah. Give me, give me something here. But yeah. uh-huh. I'll yeah. give him some pass. You can have. I mean, gosh, the amount of protagonists in novels and movies that just end up being British at the end of the day. Um, it just is. Oh. It is yeah. what it is. You need that relatability, right? Um, I read a thing that when they're designing the blue people in Avatar, uh, okay, the first versions of it looked too alien, and the test audience was not they they didn't care. It was about hard to them. connect to them. They didn't like them, so they had to make them just look basically like people. Yeah, uh, and then the people were like, "Yeah, I love this. This is great." You know, so I mean, you sort of have to cater to your audience to a degree with that. So if Paul was some weird long multi-syllable name, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, I love Doom. What's the main guy's name?" And so well, you, you know. could you could make like cool names like Stormlight Archive, right? Is my favorite series. You've got characters like Dalinar and Kaladin. Like those are cool names, but they're not. They're a little bit more interesting yeah. and, and different than just Paul. That's I didn't true. mean to go on. I didn't mean to just, dis- you know, get a big discussion around the name. I just was kind of poking it's fun fair. at the they name. Could have, they could have gone full Tolkien on it and come up with it. But Tolkien was a linguist and that was like his yes. jam, right? Yeah. was like, let me come up with completely. It's really hard coming up with names. It's very hard. That don't yeah. exist, you know? <laughs> I think Every, someone who did a really yeah. good job with it also is, is was George R. R. Martin. You know, he he had some really great characters, Tyrion, Tywin, uh, you know, the, the, the Lannisters. Really, yeah. really, really great job. That's where I'm kind of in awe of. I mean, I'm in awe of a good writer for many reasons, but especially when it comes to coming up with the like lineage and linguistics behind names and naming conventions. I'm like, I don't even know where to start on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's cool though, you know, they get yeah. into it and you're like, how'd you even come up with these names that sound awesome, but I've never heard before. Um, cool stuff. And I think a lot of them go into like old languages too and start deriving stuff from that. And oh, I'm sure. Modifying them. A Absolutely. Bit. Yeah. It's cool shit, man. Cool. You know what I'm excited about is um, I, uh, I plugged in my... First, I dusted off my Nintendo Switch last night. I, oh. I, I opened the giant trunk in the attic. I was like, ah, What is this relic I have here? Yeah, I was moving around, you know, my old uh, dial-up phone, you know, and stuff like yes. that. And I found the Switch right below that. Right. Um, dusted it off. That, that works in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is one of the oldest consoles. That I mean, it's been going for a long time. Nintendo it's, needs it's to announce Switch, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I plugged it in because um, my my six year old comes home from school and he's like telling me that all his friends are playing Zelda on the Switch. I was oh. like, well, I can't have that. I can't have the other kids learning about Zelda before my boy learns about Zelda. So I plugged in the old Switch and uh, we're gonna we're gonna power it up. I'm gonna see if if he likes Zelda or not. You know, uh, he's he's in for a treat if it if it resonates. Man, there yeah. is a lot to enjoy there. I cannot find the cartridge for it though. I was oh, like, oh no. god. I have like a I have that weird like top down Zelda that they came out with later. Found that one, but it's not as good. Okay. So, so wait, um, did did you bring out the Switch or did you bring out Yeah, the Switch. Well, maybe oh. No. Oh yeah, no, I'm not bringing out um what, like a GameCube or something. Oh, or, okay, okay. Yeah, N64. No. I, gotcha. I don't have that one. Yeah, no, sorry. If I wasn't clear. I'm bringing out the no. Switch. So the boy is going to Hopefully, it, the hopefully the battery's ones. still good. It seemed to be charging, but I'm like, I haven't charged this in like years, man. Well, yeah. Actually, that's not that true. I played Hades on it, so a couple years ago, whenever God, Hades came game. out. Yeah, what a great game. Sequel's coming out soonish too, I think. Early access, yep. Ooh, baby. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, do you want to wrap up the pod there? Yeah, that sounds good. We got some fun stuff to talk about next week. Gray Zone Warfare. The next Battlefield season. A lot is coming out in this week. 
a lot. lot, a lot. Um, thank mm-hmm. you guys all so much for watching. Support us on our Patreon if you would like to. We appreciate it very much. Um, and check us out on all the other podcast distribution platforms. And now Matt is going to leave you with some life advice. Some words of wisdom. All right. This life of advice is to take care of your teeth <laughs> with flossing. I don't know how many of you don't floss, but you need to start every. Si- no, I'm not even. Ki- I'm not even kidding. Floss your damn teeth. You only get. You only get the ones in your mouth. You don't want to get dentures. Come on now. Have you? It's seen- actually level cap. It's more important to floss than it is to uh, uh, brush your teeth. I did know that. I did yeah. know that. I think I asked my dentist once. I was like, if I could only do one thing, floss or brush. He's like, floss. Easy. Floss. Every like, time. Every yeah, time. Yeah. He's like, brushing is j- practically like not even where it's just, it just floss. And yeah. like, you know, you got it's like your, your fluoride and everything and stuff, on that. Yeah. But no, straight up. Like just, just right before you go to bed, get in there, floss have it you, up. Have you noticed how many celebrities have completely fake teeth? What is it? What no. is it called when you, when they file them down and put like a like, veneer? Is that what it's called? Is that yeah. it? Is that it? I don't know. Yeah, well, I was watching F1 this weekend and the like a whole bunch of the racers have like fake teeth and it's like really obvious, you know, because they're super white and super straight across, you know, they don't give them like a little bit of height difference, which is what normal teeth look like. Right. (laughs) They're just like straight across, you know, and just like how many, how many famous people just get these veneers? It's so weird, but also what a horrific, they like have to file them down to like shark teeth and then like glue other teeth on top of them. Like, no, thank you. I I mean, would they, did they do that because their teeth went bad and they needed to, or is it like they wanted to do it for cause like aesthetic reasons? Like, I think, well, I think a lot of the, when, when you're in that, those circles of certain levels of wealth, everybody's just like getting plastic surgery and cosmetic crap done. So if you walk in with your normal teeth, you know, that are a little bit, you know, if they're a little yellow or something like that, people are like, oh, who is this? Oh, uh, uh, hum- a human? Yeah. Normal? Normal? But, yeah, so, blo- so, so, so floss if your you teeth. don't floss, you can always get veneers is what we're trying to say. No, don't just please no. just floss. floss it's, your not teeth. That, it's not a big deal. Like twice it literally takes, a day. Okay, people. Just one, no, once a day. Just literally once a day. Well, okay. At least brush twice a day. You know? Yeah, brush twice, but just floss and then brush and then you're good. Go to bed. Yeah. Night night. Stay away from I'll that. Talk, beef I'll talk jerky to you in later. Don't worry. It's stuck in your teeth, you know. <laughs> I can't I, I feel gross if I don't floss anymore. Like I feel like I got stuff in my teeth. Yeah, for sure. I've I've noticed that as I get older, I'm like, I got a brush and I'm like brushing like three, four times a day now. Wow. Yeah. Going going hard. Going crazy, man. Going crazy. Well, I drink coffee now, so once you get coffee breath, you're just like, <sighs> I got a brush now. I gotta go brush. I got you. I got you. So that's my life advice, my my words of wisdom, which are now just turning into like <laughs> brush your teeth. It's going downhill, guys. <laughs> Go back a couple episodes if you want some valuable some valuable stuff. <laughs> what so will he come advice, up with man. next week? Uh, a man Tie who your plays shoes. video games all yeah. the day. Yeah. There's only gosh. so much I can give. I'm a, I play video <laughs> games all day. What do you want from me? It's <laughs> great. It's great stuff, man. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace out.